Hey everybody, Daniel here with another watch video for you all. And uh, this one, it's got another story to it. So we'll tell the story first and then we're gonna talk about the watches. I'll be really quick with the story so that way you can get straight to the watches. But um, last year, um, I know everybody was, you know, all hyped up on the uh, Daytona Panda train. So one thing I realized is even with a pretty reasonable purchase history, I didn't want to play that game or wait two years for a Panda watch. And I was just really pretty shocked that there were a lot of people who were willing to spend, you know, $50,000 on jewelry just to get a stainless steel Daytona. And another thing that was interesting to me is that, you know, if you check gray prices, the, the price of the stainless steel Daytona was actually usually more than the two-tone Daytona. And I said, you know what, I like two-tone watches. Am I going to sit here and, and wait for a stainless steel Daytona? Or am I going to you know, play the game to get a stainless steel Daytona? Or can I just, you know, get a two-tone Daytona and be completely content with that? And I decided, um, again, as somebody who likes two-tone Daytonas, I'm going to go ahead and just opt for that one. And so my first choice on the two-tone Daytona was the white dial on the 126 model, 126503. But I said, you know what, I'm pretty flexible. If you get anything in, let me know. And I, I thought it would take a while to get, and it didn't. I actually got one really quick. And so the AD called me and said, you know what, we've got a black dial with diamonds on it. And I said, oh, you know what, I've never been a diamond guy, but let me come in and, and take a look. And what I liked about it is that the diamonds were really subtle. So I came in, I took a look at it, and I decided, oh, you know what, that's a really pretty watch. I don't have anything with diamonds on it. They they don't stand out as much as I thought they would. It's not like they're, you know, baguettes or uh, embedded into the, the bezel. They're actually pretty subtle in the hour mark. And so I saw it in person and I, I kind of liked it. But in my heart, I still wanted that white dial. And so what I did is I kind of put this in the safe. I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a few months. If I don't get a call for a white dial, then I'm going to hang on to this. This is going to be my Daytona. This is going to be my one and only Daytona. And what happened last week is I got the call for the white dial. So we'll take a look at this one up close and personal real quick. I am wearing gloves, and I'll explain why in a second. You know, I usually don't. Um, I'm not a watch dealer. I'm just somebody who loves watches and have built a nice collection over time. But this one, you know, with the soft gold and everything, I want it to protect. So let's take a look here at the diamond dial. It really is a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. My AD was super nice and, and held it for me until I got there. He could have moved this really easily. So I drove out there, took a look at it, and said, you know what, I'm going to bring this home. And again, so my plan was to wait a few months, see if I got a call for a white dial. If I didn't, this was the one and only. If I did, then we'll figure out what to do with this. And so as some of you know who've kind of followed my journey on here, I am downsizing my collection a little bit. And so I really didn't have a need for two Daytonas. Got the call for the white dial. And this one is on the way out, which is why I'm trying to film here and protect it to the best of my capabilities. So we'll take a quick look here. And so again, this is the 126 model. This is the newest reference on the Daytona. So 126503. This comes in a few variations. It comes in a black dial, a black dial with the diamond dial. And then it also comes in a white dial and a champagne dial. Champagne dial is nice, but if you watch my other videos, I do have a Datejust 41 with this champagne dial. And so I didn't want to really kind of duplicate the look there. Um, but this is just such a beautiful piece. Uh, as you know, I like chronos. I have quite a few Speedmasters. And so I really do like this piece, but I only wanted one of them. The other nice thing about the diamond dial reference is that it does have the champagne chrono markers. And so as you can see here on the black dial, it would have black on the internal circles there where the, the chronos are. And this has champagne dial. So it really stands out. I honestly probably would love this reference even more if it didn't have the diamonds. And so I am going to kind of miss the, uh, the diamond dial a little bit, but living in Los Angeles, is just one more thing to worry about when, when wearing it out of the house. And so I feel like the white dial is a little bit more subtle. Uh, it's still eye-catchy, it's still a two-tone piece, but it doesn't have diamonds reflecting every which way. And for those that know, if you have a fluted bezel or diamonds on your watch and you're driving and the sun is shining on you, it really turns the car into like, it almost feels like a disco, right? Lights are going everywhere and probably catching people's eye outside the car. And the last thing I want is someone to kind of follow me home and, and try to get me on this one. So with all Daytonas, it does have the screw-down pushers. Uh, this is one thing that kind of, 
took me by surprise with the Daytona is that you actually have to unscrew it. And I get why they do that for waterproofing it or, you know, making it more water resistant. But coming from a, a Speedmaster fan, it's just kind of weird not to be able to push the pushers whenever you want to. So again, gorgeous watch. If you're kind of thinking about this configuration and you worry about it being too flashy, it's not that bad. The diamonds are very subtle. And I think you do get the added benefit of the champagne chronos. So we'll do a quick spin on this one, see if we can get it to focus. I don't think I need this glove. Let's take this one off. Bear with me here. Cool. So yeah, here we are. Let's see. There we go. Gorgeous. Up close and personal with this one. Um, this is an even better shot than on the other camera. So there you go. Diamond markers. Trying to catch some of that light for you. It's really brilliant outside. You know, um, Rolex does use smaller diamonds, but they use high quality diamonds. So they're very clear. They've got a great clarity and they really pop in the sun or in natural light. So here we are. You can take a look at kind of that sunburst effect on the chronos. And then we'll do kind of a quick roll. Get a little bit of condensation there for my hand. That will go away. We'll wipe all that down. But really a beautiful piece. Um, I think you can't go wrong with the Daytona no matter what the, you know, configuration is. But this, this is one that kind of took me by surprise, but it wasn't 100% what I wanted. And I really didn't want to keep the liability of two Daytonas, especially two two-tone two -tone Daytonas in my safe. So we are going to say goodbye to this one, unfortunately. And while we have you, we're going to take a quick look at the one that I am going to keep and that I am going to wear. So, um, oh, we have bezel guard here. I know people weren't a fan of that last time, so we'll take that off. So there we go. Now, this, this is just such a stunning piece, and it really does scratch that panda itch that people have for the stainless steel one. And so if it's between spending, you know, I think it was nineteen five on this or 30000 for a stainless steel Daytona, if you're okay with two-tone, I just recommend going the two-tone route. It's, it's a really gorgeous piece. It's very sophisticated. I mean, obviously, you know, these things have a history of being a tool watch, but um, I mean, watches are not tools anymore. And so to take something with a little bit of its kind of quirkiness and, you know, having that gold kind of interweaved into what is supposedly a tool watch, totally fine with it. And so this is the one I'm sticking with. Like I said, it scratches a panda itch. The white dial is gorgeous. I actually love the two-tone color. I love the two-tone on the chronos. It's just a beautiful watch. And I right after I got this, I got the call for this like three days after I had inquired about it. And so again, waiting a few days versus waiting a few years just to get that uh, Daytona at retail just didn't make sense to me. Uh, I, I Anybody who wants to go through that or is really wants that watch bad enough to wait for it, I think that's absolutely fine. I respect you for it. But for me, this was good enough. And so here is my beautiful two-tone Daytona. The roll will be similar to the one on the black dial. But here we are. Gorgeous piece. We'll do a little bit of a shot on the side-by-side. -side. These are both the same references, uh, the 126503. So, yep. Here you go. Which one would you keep? Go ahead and tell me in the comments if you think I'm making the right move here. I mean, this is also subjective. I know for me, I am making the right move. But which one do you prefer? If you had a choice between two of these, would you get the diamond dial with the black dial or the white dial? Or would you get a different uh, 126503? Would you get the champagne one or just the plain black dial? Either way, I'm extremely happy with this. Love it. Both beautiful pieces, just a little bit redundant in my collection. And I know I say this as somebody with like four Speedmasters, but, you know, I only need one of these. They're, they're a little too similar for me. Uh, if I got a call for a stainless one, of course, I'd take it at retail and I'd keep it that way. But, yeah. As always, guys, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, I've received a lot of great comments, a lot of great feedback. And I really appreciate it. Like I said, this is a hobby of mine. I'm not looking to monetize this channel or anything. I'm hoping I'm just bringing you some perspective, helping make a purchase decision, or just check out some really cool watches in person because, you know, it's it's really tough to gauge what you would like based on the images on the Rolex site. Uh, they are, you know, composite images for the most part. 
good representations of the design, but until you see things in person, it's really tough to kind of make that decision. So here they are, my two Daytonas. I really hope you like them. I, I know people like to kind of see some of these videos in the Rolex box and they're like, oh, why are you using that cheap little thing? Well, I have a nice watch box, but realistically, I don't really use it uh, because these are nice. They're super cheap. They're protective enough for home use. And you can probably even use them for traveling. They've got a nice interior liner. I, I think I paid like eight bucks for this, but I have a bunch of these. And what I do is I put my watches in here and I stack them in my safe. My watch box doesn't fit well in my safe, but these fit great. So those are the reasons I use these cheapy cases for <laughs> such a nice watch collection. But yeah, this one I, I lined with this microfiber towel because I didn't want to scratch any of the yellow gold. It's super soft, but I hope you like this video. We'll keep it short here. Uh, beautiful Daytonas, such a great watch. And uh, unfortunately, I just need one. So we're going to keep the one that I had originally wanted. We're going to say goodbye to this beautiful piece right here. I, I think <laughs> the diamonds are what made me not want to get it originally. And it's the one thing that I kind of am going to miss about it is because I don't have any other diamond dials or any diamonds on any of my watches. But, you know, it's uh, it, it's not going to be worn much, unfortunately. And to, to just have, you know, a $22,000 watch sitting in your safe is not something I want to do, especially while I'm downsizing. So I hope you liked this video. I hope I'll put things into perspective for you. If you were considering any of these references, I hope I've helped you make a decision. The great news is these are not that difficult to get, way easier than the stainless steel model. So if you're okay with two-tone, I highly recommend going to your AD and just letting them know that you're interested in a two-tone Daytona. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment. Uh, I love reading the comments. It, it helps me make you know my presentation better. Uh, like I said, this is just a hobby, so, you know, I, I do take everything to heart, but uh, there's some wonderful watch channels out there that do a really great job of, you know, directing and editing and all that, but I'm just trying to keep it real with you all here. So, just setting up my phone on a tripod. Hope you like it. These are my two-tone Daytonas, 126503, and yeah, I hope some of you find a way to, to love these so you don't have to wait crazy wait times or spend crazy prices on trying to build that history to get a stainless model because I think these are very adequate, same movements, you know, just a little bit more extravagant on the outside. But thanks for watching.